Hi, this is Oliver Lucanus, Conservation Ambassador for Fluval Aquatics. We discussed large fish in the last video, so today I want to show you some microfish. The smallest freshwater fish are in the 1 to 3 centimeters or half to just over 1 inch range. Many of them actually make great aquarium fish, but despite their small size, I would recommend keeping them in an aquarium of at least 10, but better 15 gallons or 60 liters. The reason is simple. These tiny fish do better in groups, and the larger aquarium means that they will behave more naturally. If you really want to see them at their best, keep them in larger groups in oversized aquaria. In nature, microfish occur in all kinds of habitats. This small spring in the hills above the Venezuelan Orinoco is the home of the false neon tetra. This very warm and shallow water is ideal for these tiny tetras, but just down the hill in the Orinoco floodplain, there are larger rivers where we also find tiny species, either in the very shallow water, as is the case for killifish such as rivulus, for example, or with very cryptic coloration. This Parotocinclus epley is feeding on algae off a giant tree in the middle of the river, and it is camouflaged well enough for predators not to notice it. So as for most fish, more space is better. But let's look at the other factors. As you can imagine, tiny fish are shy, because when you're really small, you have to live a more cryptic lifestyle. Think about songbirds. They like complexity. In nature, they almost always prefer dense foliage and bushes near the ground. This is what we are also aiming for with microfish. You want to create an aquarium with really dense plants and some bottom cover, either leaf litter, pieces of small driftwood, or varied sizes of rocks. The more complex the structures in the aquarium, the less shy the small fish will be. In nature, they rely on having dense cover to get away from potential predators. Tiny fish, such as this Pacilio charax weitzmani, can survive in large rivers because they can live in the leaf litter and almost always remain under overhanging cover. In the aquarium, they are shy but spectacular fish and they are territorial despite their diminutive size. The same is true for the smallest guramis, the licorice guramis of the genus Parosformanus. In Asia, there are lots of small barbs, and especially the genus Boraras, a very good and surprisingly hardy aquarium fish, unlike the spectacular but fragile Sundadanio species. All of these minuscule barbs have very beautiful colors and come from black water rivers. There are also some very small loaches, such as this Petrunichtis. But my favorite tiny fish from Asia are the gobies of the genus Stephodon. These are very colorful and make excellent algae eaters. They will generally not eat dry food, but in a well-planted aquarium, a small number of them should always find enough algae to rasp throughout the day. Their habitats are clear, fast-flowing streams in Asia, and stretching all the way out to the islands of Micronesia, where they are often the only freshwater fish. Some small fish are also a bit more sensitive, so do the research. What kind of water do they occur in? What kind of temperatures are there over the seasons? What larger fish live with them? Are there any plants, or is the water really shallow? These factors matter for small fish, and it leads us to the most important point, the food. Small fish have small mouths, and feeding them is at times more tricky than feeding medium-sized fish that make up the majority of our aquarium fish. Most of our prepared fish food is not fine enough for microfish, so the food has to be broken up. Easy enough with flake food and most pellets, a little trickier with frozen food that has to be reduced to bite size with a razor blade or pestle. Some of the really small stuff is hard to feed, and some microfish just don't do well with dry food alone. A good example are the tiny licorice guramis, chocolate guramis, and freshwater pipefish. These thumbnail sized tiny fish prefer live food culture vinegar eels and hatch brine shrimp for these fish, or you can go out to a pond and catch them some food in the summer months, such as Daphnia. It takes some time to get them used to find pelleted foods, and some species may not. Tiny fish occur on all continents, so there are plenty of choices. Many tetra species fit our size limit, but besides the obvious choice of pencil fish of the genus Nanostomus, there are also some truly tiny tetras, such as Titocharax, Melanocharacidium, and the beautiful hummingbird tetra, Trochilocharax ornatus. With such a huge diversity of catfish in the Amazon, it is no surprise there's plenty of really small species. Besides Otocinclus and Parotocinclus, genera such as Curcolonichtis, Ernstichtis, and the hilarious-looking Physopixis all contain species of really tiny catfish.
Of course, Corydora is a generally small catfish, but species such as Corydoras hastatus, Pauci radiatus, and Pygmaeus are among the smallest. Of course, Epistogramma are in the smallest cichlid category, and Epistogramma minima may be the smallest cichlid of all. Other species that remain very small are Epistogramma pucalpaensis and Diplotania. African microfish are harder to find, because not many of the very small species get exported on a regular basis. The smallest barbs are Enteromius gyi and Enteromius holsterti, and the tiniest characins would be Lepidarchus adonis and Neolivia species. These fish are tricky to acclimate, because often they are too thin after transport. Once established, they are easy to keep in an aquarium. Many killifish, such as Congo panchax and some Aphiosemian, also remain very small. There are a few small African catfish, such as Microsynodontis, as well. The smallest African cichlids are Lamprologus similis from Lake Tanganyika and the very rare Nanochromus minor from the Congo, which may be one of the two smallest cichlids worldwide. A little bigger, but much easier to find, are Nanochromus splendens and Nanochromus transvestitus. Well, I hope you got some microfish ideas from this video. Make sure to like and subscribe to Fluval Aquatics and come to see more footage of fish in nature at my channel and let us know what your favorite microfish are in the comments.